hello my uh, dear uh, subscriber to the channel and uh, to the new visitor to the channel so my name is uh, Dr. Sam Kavli I'm gonna be uh, presenting today a real case scenario from a patient who uh, uh, we treated with the uh, prostate artery embolization procedure so uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the PAE or prostate artery embolization I uh, invite you to uh, follow the link on uh, the top uh, that's gonna appear on the top uh, right hand of the uh, screen to see our previous uh, work on the topic. So briefly, this is a 67 year old uh, gentleman who had a prior history of retention, uh, hematuria and nocturia that was really bothering him. Uh, his symptom worsened over the last five weeks and he came to us with a complete urinary retention. He was very miserable, he had a foley, he was bleeding. So even though in the past he was treated by uh, some laser surgery, his symptom did not resolve and his uh, urologist offered him a resection at QRP. The patient was treated with Flomax, finasteride, his PSA was 2.5, the PPR was very high. The PVR is a post-voidin residue. This is what uh, is left in the bladder after the, the patient urinates. So 300 to 400. And uh, his prostate volume was, uh, you know, fairly enlarged. So we measured it during the procedure at 240 cc's. Um, normally, it's like 10 times less than that. So his prostate was, you know, very, very large, causing him all the symptoms over the year that, you know, did not resolve. So this patient refused surgery, he did some research on the internet and he found us because, you know, uh, even his urologist was not aware of the, the PAE procedure. So what I'm showing you here is the cone beam uh, CT images. So this, these are images like a CT scan image that, you know, we are obtained during the, the PAE procedure. We did the PAE procedure with no problem. And on the left uh, side, you can see the contrast in the left lobe of the prostate. The prostate is enhancing. On the right side, we see that the prostate, there's like a staining in all the prostate gland because we started with the left and then we went to the right. And here we did the segmentation of the volume. So this is like a very accurate method of uh, determining the volume of the prostate. And you can see here that his prostate volume is like very, very large at 240 cc's. So, and then uh, after the procedure, the procedure was uneventful, it was done as an outpatient procedure, the local anesthesia, there were no, absolutely no complication, the patient went home the same day, and then uh, typically uh, we follow the, those patients at one month and a three month. So this is a three month MRI that shows us, you know, the, the uh, radiological results of the PA. So the first thing that is kind of, you know, jump into the eyes is the uh, reduction in the prostate volume. So, the second thing is we can see and I'm showing you here is the uh, area of necrosis, the black spots in the prostate is simply the, the dead tissue, the prostate that dies and then it takes time for the body to resolve it. Second here, this is an axial view, we're looking at the prostate from above and you can see there's an opening of the outflow. So here I'm showing you, see, this area that, that opened allowing the urine in white to circulate through the prostate. So before it was completely obstructed. And that's the urine. So the urine in white will circulate through the prostate gland and you can see the, the channel that opened up simply by decompressing. And uh, you see these areas of black spots. These are the, the dead tissue. So once the tissue is dead, uh, the prostate lobes stop pressing on the ureter and the channel for urine uh, spontaneously opens. And all this, you know, the advantage is um, is there's no real resection, there's no surgery. The patient does not really feel that, so all these things are only seen on the MRI. The only thing that happens is the post embolization syndrome. The patient had some discomfort and some uh, increased urgency during the first three days after the procedure. Other than that, he was doing great. His symptoms uh, re resolved and improved dramatically. So here on the sagittal view, or like a view from the side, this is a very interesting view. So you can see here the channel that opened. This is the, the intraprostatic ureter, okay? So this is what gets squeezed by the, the gland when it enlarges. But you can notice here, this is the urine, this is the bladder. And if we look at the bladder, um, you see that the wall is thickened and uh, there are some diverticula, meaning like some small pockets inside the, the bladder wall that tells us that this has been going on for a while and the patient had this obstruction for a few years. But, you know, ultimately everything uh, really entered back uh, into order and 
symptoms disappeared, including no more bleeding, no more waking up at night. Our patient was very happy, extremely happy. He literally told us that we gave him his prostate back of the, uh, of the 70s when he was a young man. And um, all done under local anesthesia, outpatient procedure, um, uh, dramatic result. And here we're going to look at his, uh, you know, uh, clinical values at three months. The IPSS is the International Prostate Score Symptom. Uh, it was at five, which means very low. Uh, IEF is the uh, index of erectile function. It was much better than, you know, when we started. Uh, quality of life was zero, meaning the patient was delighted by the results. His PSA went down, if you remember, from 2.5 to 0.5. And according to the patient, that's the low lowest value that he ever seen. Um, his prostate volume went from 240 to 83 cc's. And, uh, and I think it's going to continue to shrink uh, beyond uh, the three months mark because simply there are areas that haven't been resorbed, uh, the black spots. His uh, post vaudine residue was negligible, which is only a few cc's, whereas before uh, PAE was about, about 300 to 400. Um, and we took that patient uh, in, in clinic, we did an ultrasound to measure his uh, you know, post vaudine residue. So, uh, dramatic results through a minimally invasive procedure, unfortunately still vastly unknown. Um, by the community of urology and patients. Again, here we're looking at just a few MRI post procedure. And this is the uh, ultrasound at three months showing you in black whatever what's left, a few cc's of urine that's left after the patient urinated. And uh, there was nothing left in his uh, prostate. So, prostate artery embolization is a, is a minimally invasive emergent procedure for patients suffering from BPH. It is a non-surgical procedure, does not have sexual side effects, patients don't lose their ejaculation or erection. Uh, it's the opposite that we see because once they uh, stop taking those medications, uh, uh, their sexual life is much more enhanced and better than before. Uh, does not require general anesthesia. We do it under local anesthesia through a small puncture in the wrist. There's no blood loss, uh, unlike surgery where there's a risk of blood loss. Here, where there's no way to, to lose the blood because they simply cut the blood flow. Uh, patients are not admitted to the hospital. They can uh, leave after a few hours. Uh, we don't have urinary side effects. The only thing is like you're gonna have some. Uh, you know, uh, increased urgency and discomfort the first two, three days after the procedure. That's normal. That's called the post embolization syndrome. Other than that, there's no risk of uh, urine leakage or, you know, wearing diapers after the, the procedure. You know, and uh, this is really a, uh, a uh, promising procedure for men uh, who want an alternative. Um, thank you for your attention.